if you had a clear, hollow, prosthetic leg that you had to wear, <laughs> what would you fill it with? <laughs> Peanut M&M's. Yeah. <laughs> Peanut M&M's. Went right to fish. Went right to goldfish. Gummy worms, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'd have an aquarium. <laughs> so have to clean it, but I'd have it. Like, like a traumatic, for like fish. a clear prosthetic. Yes. Yeah, it would with be. an aquarium fun. inside. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have a real leg inside. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else's leg. Whose leg would you steal to put in it? <laughs> so, surrounded legs, by a bunch of dancers' legs up here, so I don't know. All, all these are good. Good no, gams. These are old legs. gams. <laughs> you need new legs. Gams? Gams. Young legs. You need gams. young legs. Y'all yeah, are going to have to watch out for Tucker. Um, I was wondering if there's like a certain song or like band that inspired you guys to do what you do. Man, there's so many. Yeah, it's a hard one. I feel like it's just like amalgamation of like you know, the, the experiences that you had or like the, the records that you loved growing up. I remember like early on, like I wanted to write songs really, really bad. And so like my dad got me a guitar from his guitar player in his band. And for a long time I was like, oh man, this is really hard. Like I'm not gonna be able to figure this out. So I would just put it on and stand in front of a mirror and like listen to my favorite songs and pretend to play. And then, uh, <laughs> and then the, at some point there was like a ceremony, a graduation ceremony or something shit happened at my, my grammar school. And I told my friend that I played guitar. Because, you know, I had a guitar. I was like, I was like yeah, I play guitar. <laughs> and so that kid, like, when when they came into, like, they were like, hey, we're going to have an assembly. We need someone that plays guitar. Like, Does anyone play guitar? Holy and my friend was like, oh, he plays guitar. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So uh, I had to learn it. And, uh, and it was fucking awesome. Like, I fucking, I was like, why didn't I do this sooner? This is crazy. I mean, it really, it's probably a span of, like, three months. But... It, it was such a, a feeling of like accomplishment, you know, and a confidence booster. Yeah. And then going to see like you know local shows of like kids that were my age putting on on shows and like the bands that were like my age. It was like, come on, man, I can do this. This is crazy. And, uh, yeah, and that was that was the big thing. It wasn't like a specific song or a specific like you know band. It was just the experience of knowing that you can accomplish something. I remember being like in seventh grade and watching Green Day. Oh, uh, yeah. And like listening to Green Day and being like, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And like watching them on MTV because I like used to play that shit. They would play. I remember this one concert, that like watching them at like seventh grade and watching them play this concert and being like, fuck, this is like, that looks easy. Not easy, <laughs> but like it looks attainable. Mm -hmm. And like being really inspired by Green Day at like a weird time in my life, like before I could go to like shows by myself and shit like that. Mm -hmm. I remember really loving that band and like watching them and being like learning how to play their songs by watching them on TV. For me, it was skateboarding. I remember, yeah. you know, all I did when I was a kid was skateboard, and I, that's how I learned about all of my music was through like Thrasher magazine, watching skate videos. And like loving that alternative culture yeah. and then I, I convinced my mom when I was 14 to drop me off in a really horrible fucking neighborhood in Trenton, New Jersey <laughs> City Gardens oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 to see the Bouncing Souls and I was like the youngest person there and it's also by myself really bad place yeah. it's a fucking terrible place really my mom's insane for doing that but <laughs> I just remember like being scared in the back and just watching this and being like I'm terrified but this is so cool that just stuck with me. Bouncing Souls. Yeah. It was one of my first shows, too. Swinging out oh, wow. Bouncing Souls. Descendants. Rest of the Bouncing Souls. Pipeline. Yeah. That's a common thread in that building. How about that? Yeah. You should tell Greg. Go. <laughs> Roll up. Uh, I do have actually a specific moment that I remember. My father was a songwriter, uh, so there was guitars around all the time, and I grew up watching music listening, but I didn't really connect with it. Like I remember I was probably about nine or ten and uh, my father had a lot of acoustic guitars around and I saw the video for uh, Patience 
by Guns N' Roses. <laughs> and I looked at his guitars, and I was like, oh, it's the same kind. And so I picked it up, and as far as I was concerned, in the next hour, I had 15 songs. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was just even going blank, 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 blank. Like, oh, yeah, that's a tune. Well, like, DJ Khaled. It's called, you know, what's that? Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like DJ Khaled with the Bob Marley guitar. Um, He's not the best. No, no, no. But, uh, yeah, that was a moment, like, because from then on, I just kept playing, and then I wanted the electric, and for me, it really was just uh, also a lot of, of being able to collaborate with friends, you know, I was uh, I was in a lot of bands from very early on, and we would cover songs and stuff like that. Like you know, whether it be covering a Violent Femmes song or a Misfit song, or like you know, just it, it was about learning those songs and getting better that way. Yeah. Oh, now I have to. Yeah, go. you got to go. <laughs> um, You're on the hot seat. Yeah, <laughs> I remember me and me and my friend in elementary school would always just talk about starting a band, but neither of us even played an instrument, we would just like pretend. Um, and then he decided that he wanted to play guitar, so I couldn't. Um, <laughs> and then I remember um, actually getting um, Jane's Addiction, Ritual Day of Habitual, and just hearing the bass on that. Eric Avery is a huge, huge influence for me. Um, and I was always just like too self-conscious to, to just do it and then my mom just signed me up for bass lessons one day because I never shut up about it <laughs> um, and then I, I just sat in my room and just like listened to, to everything from you know Jane's um, Green Day Operation Ivy all anything Fugazi um, and just learned learned literally every single bass line I could um, and then it wasn't really until until Thursday started that I was actually in a, in a band, it was something I always wanted to do, but that was the first time all the pieces kind of fell into place. Um, but yeah, I mean, just music in general, I think was huge in all our lives from a really early age. Thank God you did, because you are the foundation <laughs> of this entire yeah. band. Yeah. And it's interesting that you mentioned Eric Avery, because that's always what I, like a lot of the songs, how they come about, yeah, you dudes, I consider it, yeah. I consider it to be a very Eric Avery not that you're fighting the style. Oh, I'm certainly. Oh, but I, cer no, I certainly, <laughs> I certainly do. No, but once you think about it, it makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not so on the nose. And that now that you can fly to his house, <laughs> you know, whatever you want. <laughs> Freak. <laughs> I get there first because I can teleport. <laughs> I should have done that. And no one will see you, right? <laughs> I go straight invisible. I'll see what he's doing before he even knows he's doing it. <laughs> Oh, that's so <laughs>